Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about polishing pad care. We're going to be working with McKee's 37 products. So we're here with the crew from McKee's 37 and we're going to be going over some of these points, how to care for your pads, how to clean them and what happens to them when they start to get worn. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And we are here at this event with a ton of other creators, detailers and vendors. So check out all the videos down below. I'll have them linked down there so you can watch all those other videos. So we have Nick here from McKee's 37 and we're going to be going over the chemicals and some of the products and some of the things you can do even as mobile guys. This is going to be geared towards detailers who are polishing, getting into polishing and how to care for your polishing pads. So let's talk about polishing pads. When you start polishing, there's going to be a variety of different pads out there and we're working with a variety. Some from Rupes, some from Lake Country. It doesn't matter what pad you're working with, cleaning it is going to be important. So let's talk about cleaning pads on the fly because that's going to be the easiest way to do that. So how can we clean pads on the fly? Well, Phil, as you know, as a, as a detailer for many years, I mean, pads are an investment, right? Yep. They get expensive and once you build up a collection, you want to maintain them the right way. If you clean your pads the right way, using the right products and the right techniques, then you can actually save yourself a lot of money by reusing the pads over and over again instead of just throwing them out after one or two applications, right? Correct. So I know that you're a fan of the clean on the fly method, yep. right? Which yep. with the way your technique, you use the air compressor, yes. the Tornador type of blowout system, right? Yep, yep, okay. we'll use that. We'll use just the regular tip of the, you know, uh, air compressor gun as well. Either of those options work. Kind of just depends on what's attached to the air compressor at the moment, and then we'll clean out the pads quickly. And the reason that you clean your pads on the fly is when you compound and polish, you're removing, you know, clear coat, basically. Yes. So, Plus you have the abrasives that broke down, you have the silicones, you have the solvents and the polish. All of that is going to be on the face of the pad and also in the pores of the pad. So what you do not want to do is remove swirl marks, basically taking off layers of paint, right? Yep. And then put more polish on there and take that information with those solids and grind it back into the paint. So exactly. that's why you clean the pads to begin with. Exactly. It's almost like using a microfiber and just never washing it. And there's tons of residue and there's tons of stuff in it. You got to wash all that stuff out and start fresh again. That's so a great example. Working clean. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, so as you see, we have some pads here. Some are like fresh and new, and some are pretty worn. You'll see around the edges of some of these pads, they start to get worn, and that's natural. Pads will just start to do that. Heat build up, maybe rubbing up against emblems. I'm guilty of that all the time. Even if you tape them, just the friction of rubbing up against anything on the edge of the pad is gonna start to fray them or wear them down a little bit. It's natural. It's a consumable product. You're going to have lots of pads and eventually you're going to chuck them when they just don't work anymore or they just are raggedy and they're not looking good anymore. So let's clean up some of these pads. We have some that are really bad. So we'll clean up some of the ones that are freshly used, yep. some that look like um, they've been sitting and even have little burn marks in them. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but there's a burn mark there. So obviously well-used pads. Start with the on the fly type of cleaning. We'll show you what that means. So here's an example of a pad that was just used on a panel. We have some residue from clear coat. We got some residue from whatever polish was used on here. So to quickly get this out, it's not going to perfectly clean it, but cleaning on the fly is just clearing out the cells so you can put fresh product and go back to work. And eventually this will get caked up too much where you got to switch out a pad. And mostly this is going to be for mobile guys because you're not going to have the time to go through and wash all of your pads perfectly. So here's an option. So we're going to take the Tornador gun and very quickly, very easily, you can blast it clean. You can turn it on if you want so it's spinning, uh, but do realize that that, that is going to be dust. So there's some tips. You can actually put it in a bucket. You can actually put it in the bucket with a little bit of water and blow it out. And that dust will collect in the bucket and it won't go everywhere. So that's just one way of doing it. You can also just use a regular air compressor gun and clean out while you have it pressed on. So that's one way of cleaning on the fly. Uh, very easy to do for mobile detailers. So here's a pad. Again, it's a fairly new pad. We have some polishing compound here. We're going to clean this one out a little bit more thoroughly. So say we're done with the job. Our pad looks like this. Here's a way of deep cleaning it. So I got some, and in the real world, and I'll mention this, but we'll 
you'd rinse it, you know, but like with a hose yep. or like a sink. But with this, yep. you can also rinse it in a bucket too. Yep, exactly. Okay. Or your sink or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. Washing your, like those slop sinks or utility sinks. I have one of those in my shop. So I'll collect some pads and wash in the sink. Sure, sure, sure. Yep. But you can do this as a mobile guy too. If you have room in your trailer or van, carry an extra bucket of water for these extra things that you may need. I always have it. I always had an extra bucket of water in there to fill up things, or when needed, you can throw all your pads in there and let them soak and clean them up later. But let's show you how to really deep clean your pads with some of the McKees products. So we have a couple ways. So, you know, when you're detailing a car, you're gonna use a lot of pads. Um, an option, if you don't have a pad washer, is we have our polishing pad rejuvenator. This is citrus based, it's all natural. Um, it's orange degreasers, and you put a scoop of this in a bucket, and you let the pads soak throughout the day. Yeah. Finish with the pads. They rinse out really easily. Now, if you're not using a lot of pads, if you're not a professional detailer, we have our spray, which this is one of our best sellers, mm. and it's very powerful, and it's designed to break up these spent residue, these silicone oils, the, um, any kind of solvents, the abrasive powder, and you spray this on. And compared to like an all-purpose cleaner fill, this is not going to damage the actual foam itself. Good. A lot of guys get, will use like a degreaser or an all-purpose cleaner, but it causes damage over time yeah. to the foam and also to the glue adhesive here. Exactly. So, I was going to mention that. That's important. So, so simply put it in here. And you can also rinse this out with a like a sink or a garden hose, or you just want to use a bucket here. But you can see with very little effort, this oh, pad nice. looks brand new again. So it's designed to target specific um, the solvents, the abrasive powder, any kind of dyes or colors, anything that's going to be in a polishing compound. So this is an inexpensive investment to maintain your pad collection. You know? Excellent. That is really, really nice. Yeah. And you want to make sure that your pads are clean at the end of the day and different ways of drying your pads. You could just put that on your polisher and put it on high, speed high and dry it out in the bucket here. It'll spread all the water out and then you can put that on a towel somewhere and or on a rack like this or even like yeah. a baker's rack is really good if you have room for it and let them dry out and you'll be good for your next job yeah a lot of guys will put them on a uh, like an old box fan yeah i used to do that yeah. yep i used to do that so you'll have all the pads like this and it's important too when you dry your pads let them dry face down excellent like you tip. mentioned so that way the moisture the water drains down and doesn't sit here in the backing material. Exactly. So it'll make your pads last a lot longer. Exactly. I've seen some really cool setups where they'll set up Velcro on the side of something and they will Velcro all their pads like so and all the water will drain out like that yep. or they'll do it upside down. Actually, my friend Tony Ralda has it in one of his vans. He has Velcro on the inside uh, of his roof in his van and he'll stick all of his pads on the roof Wow. and they dry out over time. So just some really cool tips. Be innovative like that and, and try different methods. In fact, down below in the comments, share how do you clean your pads and how do you dry them? And we would love to hear you. There's another product here called a polishing pad conditioner. What is this stuff? So the conditioner, uh, Phil, this is designed when you're working on paint that's very dry and brittle, um, usually like single stage, something that, that cakes up a lot on the pad. Ah. What this does is it contains wetting agents and lubricants. And before you put your compound on here, you just take this product and you do a couple of mists, ah. that's all it takes. And essentially it primes the pad and has lubrication. Excellent. So that way, when you're working on you know single stage or really oxidized paint, it doesn't build up as much. And okay. it also makes it much, much easier to clean. Okay, so it's, it's good. It's a unique product and it's actually quite popular. It flies under the radar. Uh, we sell a lot of it though. Okay, okay. Now you're using this when you're actually polishing or compounding the paint. And I've used other pol uh, polishing pad conditioners like this and they will, it seems to help with dusting. Yes, tremendous. It seems to help with lubrication. If you're using like heavy cutting compounds and say you're using like the microfiber discs, there's a lot of heat, there's a lot of chemical, you know, uh, the, the product building up in here and friction and all that, and it creates dust, it dries out quickly. So does that help with that, with like it, keeping it moist? It does, so that additional lubrication, besides making it easier to clean, it reduces buffer hot. Uh -huh. So that's usually an issue more along the lines for beginners, yeah. um, or if you're working on a boat, you're removing a lot of material it helps yeah. with a smoother buffing experience so okay cool. cool product and one bottle will last you forever because like i said all you're doing is this yeah that's it yep priming so. your pads so no more having to use like all of your compound or polish kind of the old way of priming your pads it's kind of a thing of the past yeah. you really don't need to do that anymore <laughs> using a pad conditioner like this just speeds it up yeah so it's that's a great way and you can do this um even as you're polishing the vehicle just you clean your pad out on the fly 
do another mist and put more product on. That's it, yeah. And just keep on going. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. All right. That's an excellent tip. Mobile detailers, you can do that. If you're working outdoors, things are going to dry up. I've polished in the sun for years and years and years. I wish I had a product like that because it at least adds some moisture and it cools things down as well. Now, you can also clean the pads with this product. Let's show you how. I usually do. This stuff seems so concentrated to me. It I only is. put like half a scoop in this yeah, amount you, of water. You really don't need any more than that. Yeah. I do like it too. It's really good stuff. So this is the Pad Washer 4000, is that yep. what it's called? Yep, okay, the latest cool. and greatest. Okay, awesome. And I actually did pick up one of these at Car Supplies Warehouse. And I have to be honest, at first I was skeptical because I would just clean the pads in the fly. And, and sometimes using air compressors, if the pressure's too high on some pads, it can cause a little bit of damage on the pads, maybe if you're too close or for whatever reason, it might mess up the cells or something like that. Some pads are more susceptible than others, I found. Um, but this is one way of actually, again, cleaning on the fly a little bit differently. So this stuff you can add in, the McKee's Polishing Pad Rejuvenator. So what does it do when you mix this stuff in and use it this way? What are the benefits? So what it does is it quickly breaks up and emulsifies the polishing residue and the compound residue along with the spent product, the dead paint that you took off, any embedded dirt. And it can use it in conjunction with a pad washer. Mm. It just deep cleans the pads and it's very fast and very effective. So it kind of seems like it's the cleaning and conditioning and rejuvenating at, at the same time. Because I've used this, put more product on and went right back to work on, yeah. on the panel. Yeah, there's some secret sauce in here. It's, it's a really yeah. unique product. Okay, that's, that's very cool. So very, very concentrated. I put like half a scoop in about a gallon of water or so. And I'll let it dissolve because it is a powder. And I can, I can feel that it's got some slickness to it. Yeah, it won't dry your skin out. It's, it's all yeah. natural. I mean, it's, it's... Yeah. You can wash your hands in it. Very safe. Well, it works great as a driveway cleaner, too. Really? Yeah. That's good to me. <laughs> so, putting all your stuff together like this, very easy. Clicks down. The idea behind this, how, how does this thing work? So, the pad washer, um, there's two different reservoirs. You know, we're right now, we're actually sucking up the cleaner, which is mixed with water. So, as this is pumped, you know, watch your eyes. I'm not going to pump too hard, but with a buffer, <laughs> you, you pump a little bit harder than this. Yep. So it's pushing the cleaner into the pad, mm. and then you take the machine, and you can see how this has ribs. Yep. And then you're running the machine along here, okay, and then the solution gets down here, and there's a separate tank where there's avoid cross-contamination. Yeah, yeah there so go. there's a separate tank right there. And it's sealed right here. So the dirt, you can see how dirty this is. Yep. These guys clearly use this. So this is all the gunk that's been removed from their pads over, I don't know how many details, but yeah, that's clearly awesome. this is working. Yep, it is. You gotta get it, get, it, get it lined up, I think. Oh, I'm there, sorry. There, there, there we go. go. Yeah. Line it up in the little knobs and push it down. Okay. So here's a pad, pretty dirty. Let's go ahead and demonstrate how to wash your pad with this washer. And you can do it for shorter or longer, depending on how dirty the pad is. Yep. A lot of people have their own technique. Yep. And right off the bat, it made a big difference. Already. Just a few seconds. And, you know, some polishes, they're naturally going to stain the pad. Yes. It's kind of like when ketchup stains your clothes. Exactly. It's no, it's no longer there. It's yep. just a stain. So. Exactly. But the product's been removed. Excellent. Yep. Very, very fast, very quick. And just make sure to dry your pad, you know, spin it for a while. Yep. Um, you can use a towel, too, to blot it if you like. But Yeah, that's an excellent tip. That's an excellent tip. And I know some have seen, you'll see like a little plume of water, you know, kind of come out here. It's not that big of a deal. I have that happen in my shop all the time. And if you're concerned about that, if you're worried about that, don't be, it's, it's not a big deal. If you want, set this off in a corner, go in the corner and clean your pad on the fly and then come back. You can do this in between panels, totally yeah. fine. Dry it all out, put the towel, like you said, dry it out, put fresh product, go right back to work. Yeah, and this is surprisingly dry considering, you know, just a short amount of time. Yeah. I can hold it here longer and get it, get more moisture out, but if you're using a, a water-based compound or polish, then there's really no concern if the pad is slightly damp. It's not going to hurt anything. Exactly. And again, it's already self-primed. This stuff kind of lubricates. It makes the pad nice and soft. Correct. And you're good to go and, and go right back to work again. So, yeah, it's, it's an excellent way. Again, this is more like if you have the budget for it. I know there's some cost to this. But once you start getting a shop, you'll see the benefit oh, of yeah. investing in products and tools like this. Things will speed up that much faster. So here's another cool tip. Um, and, and again, it kind of depends on the way that you want to do things. You can either clean your pad on the fly 
you know, after every other panel or so. And when you're done with the job, all your pads are done. You can do one entire vehicle with one pad, maybe two, if you're like, okay, it's getting a little worn, switch out another one. But you can do an entire car doing maybe a paint enhancement with two pads, yeah. cleaning them on the fly. And then when you're done, your pads are done. There's no buildup of pads. <laughs> you don't have to worry about washing them in your sink and spending all that time. You spent just a, a minute cleaning them and now you're all done. Yep, the products end up paying for themselves. Exactly, it really does, guys. So that's it, guys, pad cleaning. It seems like it's a trivial thing, but it is important. When you start polishing, you're gonna realize that having a clean pad and washing your pads and cleaning them on the fly, it's going to be an important part of your routine when you're polishing your vehicle. So many different ways of doing it, cleaning on the fly quickly, or you can use these products and wash out your pads, use the pad washer, do whatever works for you. If you're running a big shop, you're probably gonna have a ton of pads Cleaning them on the fly with those bucket washers, it's gonna save you so much time. But if you're like a one-man show, then you're only gonna have a few pads. And uh, it's kind of up to you. Maybe cleaning them on the fly and cleaning a few pads in your sink with some of these products is all you need. Get what you need and don't buy what you don't need to buy. But I wanna thank Nick here from McKees 37 for coming and demonstrating this stuff and explaining some of this stuff. I'll have links to these down below as well as some of my favorite pads. And again, share with us down below, what do you do to clean your pads? Do you clean them on the fly? Do you use the bucket washer? Are there different methods that you have to clean and even dry your pads? Definitely share it down below. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And don't forget to check all the other creators' videos as well. I'll have them linked down below. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.